OK, so now we have all these rules. Let's actually compute uh, the derivatives with regards to w1, b1, w2, and b2. OK, so these are the operations that we had. And let's look at the second layer. Yeah, this layer. We'll call it the second layer. And we call this the first layer. OK, so in the second layer, we have to take the derivative of the loss with regards to w2. We use the chain rules to divide it like this. And now let's see. So we said that the derivative of z2 with regards to w2, which is the derivative of this quantity over here, we said that in this case, it's just equal to a1 transpose as an outer product. This is what we just talked about. And the same for here, we said that this thing is just the identity matrix. In this case, because b2 only has one element, it will be the scalar one. But let's denote it as i just to get used to it. OK, the second quantity is the derivative of the activations with regards to their inputs. Or, so basically, it's the derivative of the sigmoid. What is the derivative of the sigmoid? Well, it's just a little bit of calculus. And we get that we can write it like this. So we can write it as if it's the sigmoid time 1 minus the sigmoid. OK, so in the case of a2 and z2, the derivative will just be a2 times 1 minus a2. And again, in this case, both of them are scalars. So we get a 1 by 1 vector, basically a scalar. What is the derivative of the loss with regards to a2? So this is the loss. We have to take the derivative of it with regards to a2. Yeah, and a2 is also y hat. It's also the predicted y. So we just replace it. And with just a little bit of basic calculus, we get that it's equal to this. Now, if we multiply everything, yeah, so remember this, we said we push it to the left, so we get it here. The rest we leave as it were, but they are element-wise multiplication, the Hadamard product, which in this case, we didn't really need as a Hadamard product because they are just scalar quantities. But again, just to get used to it, because, because in the next layer, there won't be scalars, they will be vectors, so we'll write it like this. And if you actually calculate these quantities, yeah, so this is what we had from here, and this is what we had from here. And if you calculate this element-wise, or in this case, scalar-wise, if you just take a2 times 1 minus a2 times this quantity, it turns out it's just equal to this thing over here. So a lot of things cancel, and you're left with this. So long story short, this whole thing becomes a1 transpose dot product with this thing, which in this case is a scalar, but in the next uh, layer, would be a vector. And the same for B2. We just said we have to multiply it by the identity matrix, which is, in this case, a scalar of 1. OK, so this was the second layer. Now let's calculate the derivatives of the weights of the first layer. So in order to get there, we have to pass through the A1s, right? So, so we took the derivative of the loss with regards to this, and then with regards to Z2. And now we need to take it with regards to a1, right? The activations that came out of the neurons in the hidden layer. And so we have a special name for this. And this special name will help us uh, to do it also in larger networks, as we will see. So we will denote this quantity by delta 1. But what is delta 1? It's just the derivative of the loss with regards to A2, the derivative of A2 with regards to Z2, and then the derivative of Z2 with regard to A1. These quantities we already found, we said it's equal to this. This we also calculated, right? We said that this is Z2 is just A1 W2 plus B2. And so if we take the derivative of this quantity with regards to A1, we, we saw that it's just the transpose of this matrix, so W2 transpose. And so this is what we get. Again, we denote it by delta 1. And it has a 1 by 3 shape in this case. And so once we calculate this, if we want to move even backward and calculate the derivative with regards to w1 or b1, so this is how we would write it from the beginning, yeah, derivative of the loss with regards to a2, a2, z2, z2, a1, a1, z1, and then z1, w1. But all this we already abstracted away. We called it delta 1. OK? so. This is we already something we calculated. And these are the new things that we have to calculate. And with b1, it will be the same. Only here, instead of w1, we will have b1. 
Okay. And now if we treat delta one as something that we already have, this thing is exactly like before, right? It's just this, it's just this element-wise product of a1 times one minus a1. And here it's not just a scalar quantity because this is a vector and this is a vector, this is a one by three, and this is a one by three. Okay. Um, this one we said it's the inputs, which are X for this layer taken on the left side as an outer product. And in this case, this will be uh, the identity matrix, but it will be a three by three identity matrix. So if we put everything together, we will have this for this, and then this is taken to the left side as an outer product. And for the B, uh, the I doesn't change anything. So we just get this. Okay, great. We can summarize everything for our small network. And this is what we will get. Okay, so I put it here with everything, including the shapes of everything. So you can pause the screen and look at it more if you need to. But this was for a single observation. The true loss will be the sum of all the individual losses per data points. And so if we take the derivative of the loss with regards to some weight, it will just be the sum. It will just be the derivative of all these individual losses with regards to the weight summed up. So what we would do is take the first dimension of any vector and expand it to be the data set size or the batch size. So previously X was just a row vector. Yeah, so we had X1 and X2, but now we want X1 and X2 pair observations. So X will grow to be X11, X21 until X1n and X2n. Okay, and this will be an n by two matrix or a big n, yeah? Okay, so this means that any outputs along the way, and it doesn't matter if it's activations or the final outputs, yeah, the y hat or the y's also, will have an n by k shape where k is the number of neurons in that layer. And so how do we sum up these gradients? So for the w's, we have a neat trick. The outer product will already take care of this for us. So if a1 is n by three, a2 is n by one, and y is n by one, then as we saw before, this was the expression for the derivative of the loss with regard to w2. Only before here, there was a one and now there's an n, but this is exactly what its summation is. And if you don't believe me, maybe just write it down and see it for yourself and it will help you understand. But yeah, the outer product will take care of the sum for us. It will do the sum for us. But this will be for the Ws. For the Bs, we have to sum it. There's a few ways to do it. One way is to use vector operation. And so we will use vector operation. We will take a row vector of one and multiply it by uh, this quantity over here. And this will create the sum for us. Okay, so in the end, we'll get this quantity over here. And so what will change in our previous formulas? Well, here the quantities will have n instead of one, okay? Uh, but they won't change for the Ws, nothing else have to change. The operations stay the same, again, because this outer product will uh, take care of the sum for us. For the Bs, here it will change to n, uh, but we'll, we'll also have to add this vector of ones in order to do the summation. Yeah, we could also just do a sum, but this vector operation will be more efficient. Okay, so this is how we accumulate the loss for our whole data set, or maybe just a batch uh, from our data set. Let's move on and talk about what happens if you have more layers in your network. So here we have two hidden layers. Um, yeah, so here we'll have W1, W2, and W3, uh, B1, B2, B3. Here we will have the Zs1, the A1s, the Z2, the A2, the Z3, and the A3, which will be equal to this. And this will get to the loss if the real Ys as well. Okay, and we can write everything like this. And these are the dimensions of the weights and the biases. Well, here is where we need these deltas, okay? So, okay, so here the derivative of the loss all the way to A2 will be delta two, and the derivative of the loss all the way to A1 will be delta one, okay? So this will help us abstract uh, the quantity so we won't have to rewrite them again. So delta two will be the derivative of the loss with regards to A2, uh, it's, we can break it down like this. Uh, this, we already found what it is. We can write it like this. 
delta one would be the derivative of the loss with regards to a one. Instead of starting from the start, we can just start from delta two, which is the derivative up to a two, and then take the derivative of a two with regards to z two and z two with regards to a one. A2 with regards to Z2, we already know it's this quantity over here because our activations are a sigmoid. Z2 with A1, we said it's the projection back. So this is what we will have. And in general, for a general network where we have maybe K layers, we can generalize the entire process. So delta K will always be the delta K before that, the activations of layer K plus one, then element-wise product with this derivative of the activation functions of that layer, and then the dot product with the projection matrix that projects us back to the previous layer. And so these are the delta k's. The derivative with regards to wk, we will have this outer product. Yeah, the, these activations, these inputs will be transposed, and we will take them as outer products times the delta k's times the activations. And for the b's, it will be just this without any outer product, but we will want to sum it. So we will add the one transpose. So again, I, I know this is a lot of material and a lot of math. Maybe go over it a few times. Maybe try to look for other sources, uh, brush up on your matrix calculus. And it's also OK if you don't fully understand it. Um, again, frameworks will do auto differentiation for you. The need to actually go under the hood and understand what's going on, for most part, is not that common unless you do research or you deal with more deeper topics. But in the next video, we will code this. Uh, so hopefully it will help you drill down these concepts even more. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you in the next video.